Okay, cheers guys. Ah, oh, smooth. Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey. Yeah, it's, um, it's a little bit sweet, but it's, it's really rather nice. Anyway, so I thought I'd have a little chat about my new watch, which is the new uh, Seiko 5 Sports uh, line, which they've brought out with. There's about 27 diff different designs, I believe, different kind of combinations of uh, straps and face colors, face coloring and, um, you know, whatnot. This is the SRPD 65K4. So the 65 is this face with a kind of darker, almost like black gunmetal um, watch body with mostly black face or very dark face at least. Not much color on the face. And then the K4 is the one with this um, strap, which is a sort of a NATO khaki sort of NATO strap. Um, so let's have a good look, look at it. And I thought I'd have a little chat about why I chose this watch because I've kind of been getting into I've been getting into my watches recently I've always been a big fan of sort of you know Casios and uh, G-Shocks and all that kind of stuff but I've been sort of studying uh, the history uh, you know the, hor the horology um, of watchmaking and you know the different brands and kind of what happened to the industry after you know after the advent of quartz and all that kind of stuff and I just found myself getting more and more fascinated by by the the whole sort of um the idea of a proper mechanical watch. So I wanted to buy a, a watch that would kind of like see me on my way as my sort of my gateway drug, as it were, my first sort of proper serious watch. Uh, and when I say serious watch, you know, this isn't a lot of money, um, this watch. You can pick them up for around about sort of $200, uh, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. It does vary on the exact model and who's supplying it to you, but it's not a terribly expensive watch. But um, so let me explain why I chose uh, this, because I did a lot of research and I was, like I said, I was reading about the history, I was um, chatting to, uh, you know, people on sort of forums and getting into the scene, get, you know, gr joining groups and talking to people about, um, you know, what watch I should go for and all that kind of stuff. And the SKX is a hugely popular um, watch from uh, Seiko. Um, it's been out, you know, quite a while now. It's sort of sort of like a classic utility diver's watch, and a lot of people are sort of calling this new Sports Five line um, a replacement, which is not really a replacement, but it does look incredibly similar. They've made some improvements. There's some things which aren't as good, um, but uh, so let me just quickly go over that. So I decided that I did want want a, a diver's type watch. Some people would say this isn't a proper diver's watch anymore because it's now uh, only um, it only has a sort of a 10 bar, uh, which is like 100 meters um, sort of. So it's not ISO, it's not dive ISO um, certified anymore. So it's not it's not actually technically a proper diver's watch anymore because, you know, 100 meters doesn't cut it when it comes to proper uh, diving. But, you know, I'm not a diver, so that didn't bother me, but it did kind of cause a little bit of an uproar for some people, especially, you know, fans of the SKX, which was 200 meter ISO certified. And, you know, the kind of the history of the watch is a diver's watch. So the fact that one of the core, I mean, you know, that's the reason for this numbered bezel, you know, it's to, you know, it's to help with uh, your dive and, and, you know, monitoring your time for coming up, coming down and the air in your tank and all that kind of stuff. That's kind of the purpose of this bezel. Um, and so to have the sort of core fundamental aspects of the watch now weakened going from 200 meters to 100 meters with this new line i can understand why a lot of, a lot of people are uh, criticizing seiko for doing that um, but they also improved a whole bunch of stuff so for instance the old S skx uh, you know that didn't have a uh, hackable it wasn't uh, windable unless you, you modded it or changed it um, and what hacking is basically is being able to stop the second hand by pulling the crown out so you can like you know fine tune your your accuracy to you know uh, uh, atomic clock or whatever uh, and also the the skx was only um aut was on any automatic operation on the module so it only got, got wound up by moving not by winding whereas this does does both uh, and they've made other other improvements they've now got um, relief um you know the, the the there's a relief on the dial now it's not just paint uh and a few other little little tweaks and, and bits and bobs the module itself in this, I believe it's an improved uh, 24 joule uh, module. Um, and I, I'm going to be sort of going over basic stuff. So just to explain what the joule is. So this is a 24 uh, joule watch. 
and basically they use the jewels um, essentially as bearings so sorry sorry if I'm talking kind of explaining obvious stuff but for um, you know I'm just getting into this so a lot of this stuff is fairly new information for me but just so you know so when they say 24 jewels there's actually 24 for um, like little artificial jewels within there which they use essentially as bearings because they're very hard wearing little bits of um, you know material and if you used you know actual you know metal bearings or whatever that would wear out quicker and probably impact accuracy as well because you know it would it would change and it would, it would wear down quicker so that's what the 24 jewel bit is um, anyway so yeah so there's a bunch of different improvements they've made over this and the, the module in here is kind of like they've brought down from the what was the model above previously and made some tweaks and bits and bobs so there's lots of little improvements but there's also a couple of things that you know are it's proving troublesome for the real fanboys of Seiko fanboys anyway so why did I choose this watch um, there, cause there's a, a zillion watches you can buy for this kind of money so First of all, I think Seiko. I wanted. I wanted to buy into a brand that had some history, and obviously, Seiko had has got a real depth of history to it. It was always sort of pushing the boundary. It was. It was the first of this. It was the first of that. It and it's a company that kind of does everything quite well. You know that it, you can go into like Argos and buy a cheap sort of like thirty pound watch from Seiko, and you know it's going to be you know a pretty good quality option and great value for money. And then you can also you know spend you know tens of thousands or even more like crazy amounts of money on these really complicated, uh, you know beautiful you know sort of luxury watches from Seiko, and they're going to be the top of the top in in their area. You know there's you know you've got sort of so many different big big brands, but I think the thing that Seiko does well is it has something for everyone. You know, you can come in at the entry level and you can come away with a, a good watch. You know, you can't really do that with like, you know, Rolex or Patek or, or, or some of the other big, big kind of uh, brands. Um, so, so yeah, so I think Seiko, you know, I had a bunch of uh, boxes I wanted to check as my first um, sort of semi-serious watch. And Seiko just seemed to be ticking all those boxes. So in terms of size, I wanted so I was aiming for around about the sort of 40 or a little bit bigger size diameter because I think that that seems to be if you don't have like a huge collection of watches you know I've only got a few um, you don't want to be buying really bizarre ones that you can't wear often and I think this size um, so it's 42 millimeters diameter 46 that way and 13.4 in depth millimeters um, which is a nice kind of all-round size that you know a big wristed guy can wear or a small wristed guy can wear it's a nice sort of like you know in between it's got a bit of heft to it a bit of weight let's just check the weight actually let's just quickly pop it on the scales I think it's around about oops hang on wait for that to reset trying to do everything too quick there we go so yes yeah, it's, it's around about 90 92 94 grams um, so it's not a light watch, but it's obviously not a heavy watch uh, either. You know, it's probably about three times the weight of a cheap Casio like that, or twice the weight of a sort of a G-Shock or something like that, just to put it in into perspective for you. Um, so it's got a bit of heft to it, and and it's but it's about the right size that I was wanted, and I wanted something that I could wear every day. Now. Um, this raised bezel that you get on a diver's watch that automatically makes it a little bit more hard wearing because you're much more likely going to bang the edge of the bezel when you're, you know, sort of hitting things with your arm and stuff like that than you are the glass. So that immediately makes it a little bit more hard wearing, even though this is hard lex glass and not um, not sapphire and some people will, will poo poo that and say oh you should if you want, want to be a serious watch you want to have sapphire on it now you know there's pros and cons sapphire is obviously a l much 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 more scratch resistant uh, but to get decent sort of impact resistant on sapphire they, ne they tend to be need to be thicker and then that pushes the price up a hell of a lot so this is probably going to be you know for, for, for your money for your bucks this is going to be more impact resistant than sapphire would be at the same sort of price point Whereas with Sapphire, it's way, way more scratch resistant. You know, this will get uh, be prone to scratches, um, but it's a little bit more like less likely to actually shatter uh, and actually, you know, completely break uh, Sapphire wood for, for the same sort of price. Obviously, you can get expensive Sapphires that are incredibly impact resistant as well. But generally, this is a nice kind of like, you know, middle ground where it's pretty pretty tough but you could scratch it if I rubbed keys on there now I could easily scratch that um, that glass so be aware of that you're getting hard lex and you're not getting a sapphire glass um, but you know like I was saying about the bezel because it is raised and the glass is inset you're much more likely gonna sort of bash this edge than you are scratch 
your um the glass so that kind of you know for me i think that's an absolutely fine fine little little trade-off so let's talk about some other um aspects so we have the hard lex stainless steel basically we've got amazing loom bright you have the um uh they have this loom bright loom which is the sort of seiko um proprietary uh, glowing stuff basically in case you don't know what I'm talking about and it is incredibly bright like I was a bit shocked to be honest with you I'm kind of fairly new to you know the world of proper watches but I was shocked how bright and how long it glows for it's surprisingly bright like you know even if it's been on your watch all night and you've been sleeping and you get woken up at sort of four in the morning you can still see your watch it's not like super bright after many many hours obviously it starts to fade but you can still read your watch even after many hours in pitch black I and mean, if it's just come out of a sunny environment into a dark environment it's incredibly bright it's like you know crazy bright much brighter than i, I expected um you know coming from digital watches with the lights and all that kind of stuff um so it has the r uh sorry 4r36 um module in there let's have a little little look at that so this is another one of the things that i wanted to tick off on my um first automatic mechanical watch uh you know sort of checklist and that was a see-through uh, case back and this has that so i think if you're kind of getting into this world and you're falling in love with the idea of these little mechanical marvels um i think you want to be able to see it so this has a gla glass back as well so you can actually um you can see what you're paying for you can see the automatic movement spinning around you can see some of the uh the jewels in there and you can see the little little heart the regulator in there um the escapement all that kind of stuff you can it's not sort of a super pretty um you know it's sort of very very sort of utility it's not sort of very polished and, and and delicate in there it's quite sort of just functional but I, I still wanted to be able to see i wanted to see what i was paying for you know if you're getting into this world of um you know mechanical hearts beating inside your little uh you know your your delicate little machine that you wear on your wrist you want to be able to see it so it's not just sort of hidden away for me anyway i want to be able to see it so that was one of the that was a pros so this um for our 36 module has a 40 about a 41 hour roughly kind of reserve so if you leave it on the side and you don't wear it for a couple of days it should be still uh ticking away quite happily um i'm quite sort of furtive and I, I move around a lot so the automatic movement that winds as you're moving around um you know basically once if you if you wear this watch every, every day you never need to wind it because your body just just winds it that's sort of part of the part of the beauty part of the sort of magic of it is that you're you know you're turning this wasted kinetic energy into this machine and it's feeding it into this machine and then, and then telling you the time i know I'm, I'm you know if anyone's into watches i'm explaining how uh to suck eggs to your grandmother by saying things like that but it is it, for me it's part of the magic that i'm just getting into so excuse my my excitement for the basics of this stuff um so as a day and date um complication so it's you know that's what your complication is basically is, is anything other than telling the time and it tells the day and date uh, one, one thing i'll say about that is it takes many hours to change over so if you look at your watch at sort of midnight in the middle of the night the, they're sort of like halfway through like you, you know halfway through tuesday to wednesday and the date's like halfway through flicking over and it takes like about three hours to turn over to the next day i think that's pretty common for these sort of like this this level of automatic uh, mechanical watch but just so you know it doesn't have this like click click kind of like magical sort of turnover like uh, a much more expensive watch would would but it's still it's part of the charm it's part of the sort of mechanical charm uh, like i said it's 10 bar which is 100 meters and it, it's, so it's not fully dive um cer certified anymore like the the previous models but for me i think 100 meters is going to be plenty you know i will be wearing it and getting in wet sometimes but i'm not going to be diving with it so i think i think 100 meters um water resistance for me is absolutely fine it doesn't bother me that it doesn't have that at all um so yeah so that's covered a lot of the the specs so let's let's talk about a couple of the um the the pros and cons so i think for me i've kind of explained a lot of the pros already i think the quality really is there with a, a seiko and so you you feel like you're buying into uh, a piece of of kind of you're buying into the history of the company when you buy a watch like this and you know this isn't this isn't an expensive watch but it's still you feel that you feel like you're buying into that the sort of heritage so that is a big sort of a, a pro for me and and also because it doesn't have any kind of 
it doesn't have any pretentiousness to the idea of a Seiko, you know, it's a Japanese watch brand, which makes cheap watches and expensive watches. You didn't, it doesn't have that, and I, I quite like that as well. Um, so it's not flashy, you know, it's, it, it has sort of a subtlety uh, to it. Um, yeah, it has the, the hackable, um, hackable option, and it has the, you know, the wind down, the automatic option, as a see-through case back. Those are all good pros, and I really like the look of it, and, you know, it's, it's comfortable, and the size, and all the rest of it, so those are all pros. Uh, a couple of cons though, um, like I said before with the hard lex, that is prone to scratching. So, you know, bear that in mind. You're not getting a sapphire um, bit of glass on this. So uh, keep that in mind if you're thinking about buying this because there is at the same price point, you can buy watches that have sapphire glass, which are going to be much more scratch resistant. But for me, I'm happy with the hard lex that's in here. Um, in terms of accuracy, so if you if you like me, you're just getting into this world. So to give you some sort of idea, this £10 Casio has is probably about 100 times more accurate than this. <laughs> so, so bear that in mind. Like I'm running about 7.5 seconds fast per day um, from my findings so far, which I think is about average because they tend to run slightly fast. There's a sort of error, error window. I think it's between 30 and 45 seconds per day. That's the sort of, that's their margin for error that they allow themselves, which is quite large. Uh, but you'll probably find that it just runs, you know, between five and 10 seconds fast, which I think if it's going to run one way or the other, I think going fast is better. It's certainly easier to correct for. You can just, uh, you can hack the watch, pull the, the crown out briefly, let it catch up, then put it back in, and then you're back to, you know, bang on zero again. Um, so, you know, bear that in mind. If you are just getting into this whole mechanical world, a cheap three, four or five pound Casio will be much, much, much more accurate than your mechanical Marvel. But, you know, that's... It's sort of part of what you're buying into. You're part buying into this this sort of miraculous mechanical beast. You know, you're not you're not wearing it. You're not buying it because it's you know incredibly accurate. You're buying it because there's some sort of there's some magic, some undefinable kind of magic, analog magic there. Uh, which you know, I'm into my cameras, into my lenses, and I love messing around with the old film um, and old sort of analog ways of creating art. And you know, it, there's something about that. There's something that that is more uh, tangible to your imagination you know it's not just a it's not like an iPad which can do a million t things more than this can but this holds my attention in terms of as an object way 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 more than an iPhone or a or a Casio or something like that it's just something tangible about the sort of man-made mechanicalness of it anyway I'm waxing lyrical again so the other cons so I, I would say that the only other con that I would point at which is worth considering is I tend to, for me personally, I tend to wear my watches a little bit loose. And even though they've shifted the crown around to the four o'clock here, which is, in my opinion, it's a great design uh, choice um, because you don't have the crown sticking out and kind of poking you in the back of the hand so much. But it has this, this crown guard, these metal crown guards that are very pointy, really very pointy. Um, and if you te if you're like me, you tend to wear your watch a little bit loose. It's not like tight on the wrist, but it's a little bit loose, and it tends to slide up slightly. I, I just tend to prefer that. And then if you lean on something like that, what I find is I'm finding these pointy uh, lugs. Um, sorry, the crown guard here. These two metal bits here. I'm finding them. They are digging into the back of my hands, and you know creating quite a quite a dent to be honest with you obviously i can just tighten up the strap and then it's it's no longer a problem um so that might be something that is just me but i do think they could have just softened that off ever so slightly so it's less that really is almost like the the point of a knife like just here and here digging into you uh, and it's hard metal as well so you know it's not like it's a soft bit of rubber just to give you an idea like you know a g-shock something like this is going to be is going to be way more comfortable to wear you know it's lighter and it's sort of formed it's going to be much more comfortable to wear than this but not to say not to say that this is uncomfortable it's just got you know it's just different it's got more weight it's got more heft to it it has a bit more sort of presence um so yeah so there you go guys i think i've kind of talked about everything that i wanted to talk about i have been i kind of i'm quite tempted to do a video about the history of watches and stuff because i've been really getting into it uh, but it's such a deep world. I don't really want to start talking about it now because I'll, I'll never stop. Um, but to sum up, I think I'm really, really happy with this purchase. I'm really, really happy with this watch. And I think if, like me, you're just getting into your first sort of serious mechanical automatic watches, 
I think you could probably really not go far wrong getting one of these. I really like it. Obviously, if you really want that sort of the providence of, uh, you know, a proper diver's watch, because, you know, there's something to be said that this has a diver's watch look, but it's not a proper diver's watch. And I get that. That kind of takes an edge off of its clear sort of identity. So you could just go out and buy a secondhand SKX, um, you know, 007 or the 007. Uh, the 13 and the 7 there's different sizes and stuff so you may want to go that way but for me I wanted a new watch I wanted something that was fresh out of the factory uh, and also I wanted a clear, clear case back and I wanted the hackable and I wanted a few of the other little improvements this has over the SKX um, but yeah I, 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 I would just say I, I'm really happy with this let's, let's just leave that there um, and I just keep finding myself looking at it on my wrist and 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 sort of I just, I'm just enjoying owning it. It's hard to explain. Uh, it's, it's, you know, you kind of have to sort of understand the history and understand how watches have got to this point to sort of understand why you'd want to spend much more on something which doesn't do the job as well as something that's cheap. Uh, it is a hard thing to rationalise and explain, but it, 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 there's something there. There's something magical that I think if you're at, like me, you're kind of just getting into this world. Um, it, it's, it's hard to put into words. Let's just put it that way. Anyway, guys, let's leave that there. I shall uh, catch you next time, but I hope that was uh, vaguely interesting and I hope it gave you a good idea of the pros and cons of this, this little beauty. Okay, guys, peace out. Time for some more self-medication. Ah, oh, that takes the edge off. Okay, guys, peace out.